if you want your lock switches and window switches to look like this, then stay tuned because we're going to show you how to do it today. All right, so if you have a 99 to 02 uh, Silverado new body style 99, and you will tell by your mirrors looking like that, and your door handles looking like that, <laughs> uh, basically a G any, I'm pretty sure this is going to apply to any GMT 800. And if you don't know what the GMT 800 is, go ahead and Google it. I'm sure Wikipedia has an article on it, and uh, basically it's like 2,000 Tahoes and up to 06 and whatnot like that. I'm, I'm sure this is pretty close to, but for sure it's going to apply to the 9902 Silverado Sierra 2000-2006 Tahoe Suburban. Most likely Yukon. The Yukons might have had the new style switches. I don't know. I've never taken them apart. But anyway, so what you're going to first want to do is just pull out your window switch and just simply pull, get underneath it right here. Pull up, there's two clips. Mine, that one usually gets stuck for me. Um, and then pull it out, unhook it, actually. Uh, you can unhook it now. Yeah, we'll do it uh, later, actually. What you're gonna need now is a uh, a Torx bit. Um, I think it's T20, maybe T15. I don't know, I'm gonna go grab it and find out. All right, so I got away with doing this with a, a T15. You might, it actually might be a T20. This seemed kind of loose. I have them both, but I got away with doing it with it. So you're going to loosen up those two screws, and then that should happen, but I wasn't ready for it to happen. Then you're going to remove your uh, little trim piece. If your clips happen to get stuck in there, all you got to do is get underneath them. Push kind of on an angle, push in kind of on an angle, and pull them out. And then they just go back on here. See my plastic, this has been done so many times in my truck. The plastic's getting a little uh, used and abused, if you will. You push them back on, and you're good to go again. Um, next, uh, you're going to take the switch part. I guess we'll unhook it. I didn't really want to do it yet, but we will. So for that, all you're basically going to do is uh, unplug it. There's one connector on the passenger side, two on the driver's side. Three, actually, on the driver's side if you come to power meter switch. You push this towards you. And it releases, and it's really hard to do it with one hand, of course. Now we're going to go in and take the switch apart. So first, remove your screws so you don't lose them. And take those out. Next, you're going to need two small screwdrivers, two small slots, like so. Um, you're going to take off the switches themselves, the little buttons. And for that, all you do is you get in the middle where they pivot. You get underneath them like so, just kind of wiggle it off. That one came off really easy. Usually they don't. Get underneath them, wiggle a little bit. It's kind of, it's kind of difficult. Uh, you might think you're gonna break them, but you shouldn't. Um, get that out of your way. Just kind of get underneath them a little bit, pull out towards you like so. Now that that's off, we're gonna take the switch assembly apart. And for that, as you can see, there's one, two. Um, I guess those are kind of, those kind of hold it together. It's three, four, five, six, seven, eight clips that hold it together. And you just kind of get underneath them all. I'm at a bad angle right now. I guess I can show you on the bottom one. You just kind of want to get between it and uh, get underneath it like so. Like so, top one, like that, switch it apart, your little top cover comes off as you can see. Um, I need to get you a better angle though. Um, let me look. What can I prop you up on? Let's try this one. That'll work. There we go. This should be a little bit better. Alright, and actually, look at this mess I have. I'm yanking all this stuff right out. Look at this. There we go. Just pull that out. <laughs> there we go. There. That's all nonsense. Let me try to get out this hot glue. That's what I used to hold the LEDs in. Did we see old ones? Um, probably the best I could think of. And it worked well. But, uh, just kind of makes a mess. And... And whatnot. I'll worry about it later, I guess. Um, now, when you take your switches apart, you're going to be having um, 
Let me see if I can find it. There's a little piece you'll have in there that I already have removed. Um, yeah, my workbench is such a mess right now, guys. I don't know what to do with them. Um, actually, I can it. So when you take your switches apart, um, let's see, you will have something that looks like this. Um, yeah, that's it. You have this little piece in here that goes around the light bulb, and then it, uh, it this is what projects the light to the uh, uh, the switches. This, this should be it. Yeah, that's got to be it. I don't know. It'll look something like this. And uh, basically, it sits down around the bulb, and uh, it'll be way down in there. I can't get mine in there right now because the hot glue I have in the way. I'm just kidding there. It kind of is. It's kind of in. You'll have that little piece. There's two little clips that hold it underneath the bulb. God, I can't get you up high enough to see it. Um, good enough, I guess. There's two little clips that hold it up underneath the bulb, and you can pull them out. It's kind of a pain. If you break it, you break it. Oh well, I broke one of them, don't care, because I'll probably never use these again. I just kept them just in case, and for demonstration of video purposes. Now, you're going to need to grab your 12-volt tester, or a voltmeter, whatever you got, it don't really matter. You could even just grab a uh, an LED if you already ordered yours and hook it up to find out. So, grab your 12-volt tester, whatever you have to be able to see if there's 12 volts. <laughs> so, we'll grab that. We're back out to the truck. Uh, I got my 12 volt tester. I got my switch plugged back in. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and turn your lights on. I've already done that. Uh, ground your uh, your 12 volt tester out or voltmeter, whatever you got to do to see there's power. I grounded mine out to my CB. That should be a decent ground. We'll see. Um, and then see what I did is I just broke my stock light bulb. If I can get my switch to balance here, I just broke my stock light bulb off. Left the uh, two wires coming out, and we just got to figure out which one's positive or negative. So that's how we know that's positive. So when I have the locks over here, we know that the uh, right one is positive. Right one's positive, left one's negative. Don't forget that. And uh, what you actually can do is go to these. Um, you can actually solder to these. I didn't prefer to. You can really do this however you like. I'm just showing you the way I do it. So we know that right is positive, left is negative. Shut the lights back off. And uh, unhook the switch. Maybe I'll be able to do it with one hand now. Just kind of. There it is, one hand. Look at that. We're going to go back into the workbench and start soldering away. Um, get this nice and hot. And I actually moved my solder in my mouth. It's a tube. Don't worry, you're not going to need lead poisoning. Hopefully. <clears throat> Pull out a nice, a nice section. I'm gonna put it on my mouse so I can't talk. Basically, we're gonna heat that up and just solder a little bit on it. All right, here we go. <coughs> Get it nice and hot. I guess I can talk a little bit. Wait a call. Wait a little bit. Got it in a bad spot. Mm. Let's see how we did. I can't really, I couldn't see with that side of my mouth very well. Looks like we did fine. So we're going to do the same with the negative. Um, negative lead is the one we didn't side do, if you can see. Looks like quite a mess, but uh, I can't tell if those are touching or not. To be honest, that solder and that negative lead. Hold on. Getting phone calls. I am sorry. So we just got our positive lead soldered. We're going to work on our negative quick. That's the problem with doing a... Uh, Video over a phone. You get phone calls in the middle of it. So here we are. Um, uh, kind of fold my negative over a little bit in half. Doing what I can. You can see that or not. Um, all right, we're gonna get our solder ready in our mouth. <laughs> Heat her up. <coughs>
see how we did. I saw I slipped a little bit. But it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Best, ba best way to try it, <clears throat> I'm gonna just throw a little hot glue on them. Right in the middle of that so we don't have any uh, conductivity going on. Just do a little dab in there, quick. <clears throat> As you can see, I just put a little hot glue in the middle. We're gonna see if it's gonna short out or uh, or work. <laughs> the shorts out, worst that's gonna happen is gonna get a little spark, maybe blow a fuse, no big deal. And uh, we'll see, so I'll be back out to the truck. I got the switch plug back in. We're gonna turn on the lights. No blown fuse. LEDs work. We got, we're in luck. We are in luck. It works. Um, so yeah, they work. I'm happy. Guys, so sorry about that. I had to cut quick. My card was full on my phone. So we're just going to hot glue these LEDs in. This is how I did these other ones. <laughs> I thought someone was at my house. Basically what we did is we just put a little dab of hot glue on them. And we set them right between the switch. Uh, for these diffused ones, that works the best. For the otherwise, for not, you can put them on an angle like that to aim at the little lock button. You know, you kind of want to aim at the middle of it um, so you don't get a big little hot spot. Someone's over here. I don't know. Hopefully, they don't come over here. So we're just gonna throw a little dab of hot glue on this, like so. That's what I did last time. You know, just not not too much, not too little. Set it right in the middle. Give her give her a nice hold for it to dry. Neighbors have visitors across the street. Then I usually just put a little bit in the middle. Right. So I know it's going to hold. That's the only problem with hot glue is those little, um, little strings you get out of it. <laughs> There's that one. Now i got to take out the old hot glue for this, this, uh, this other one. Here. Um, and I can just melt it out with the glue gun. Oh, that works. Soldering iron will melt it out. <laughs> oh, look at that! It melts right through it. Do you ever, uh, do you ever in a pinch, use your soldering iron to melt hot glue out? That's me cleaning off the soldering iron, by the way. It's okay. This isn't mine. This is a buddy's. So. I'll just melt a little hot glue on it, he'll plug it back in when he gets it back and be like, what's that smell? It was like burning plastic. <laughs> Alright. I got it in there, got it glued in there. So I just throw a little bit in the middle, like so. I'm just doing this off camera quick. I got it glued in there. That one might be a problem. Looks like I put a little too much in there. We'll see when we uh, get it plugged in. We're going to put the switch back together and hope for the best. So, uh, with all my wiring, I'm gonna just kind of go like this, just kind of tuck it in there. I know I probably will do this piece on camera. I got a lot of tucking to do. Go like so around that switch. Something like that'll work. Put the cover back, get the cover lined back up. And hope for the best. There we go. Try them out. don't matter to me as much as the other one because this is a passenger side. She feels fine. Um, make sure she's clipped together in all the places because if not, you're going to have trouble pushing your buttons. Learn that from experience. Put your little buttons back on. Just like so, you just kind of, oh, I did that way out of camera. I thought I was in there. Um, I'll show you on this one quick. You just put them right where they need to be, basically. Push. Um, oh, that one I didn't get is. No, I didn't get that one. The lock one seems to be the most difficult to line up. Wait, do I got that wrong? No, that's right. It's not, it's just not going where it needs to be. Oh, you know what? I got hot glue on this side. That's what I did. Okay, hold on. See, we're going to melt it off. There's a little bit of hot glue right here. Oops, not in camera again. Just melt it off of the soldering iron. That'll be good. Go around here a little bit. <coughs> there we go. There we go. 
and I didn't know how to camera again. I just, just, you'll figure it out. You probably won't break and put them back on. Break them, we'll be taking it off part. Now we're gonna head back out to the truck. Plug in, and I left my lights on. Keep this a nice one simple step. And hope for the best. Plug it back in. And it works. I know you probably can't see it very well. Picture of that at night, right? That is gonna look sweet. Oh, the unlock's a little bit dark. I don't know if I, maybe I'll fix that. You can't even see the unlock actually. On this one, it worked just fine. Huh? Like, they look a lot better at night. That one worked a lot better than this other one. Oh. Hmm, what did I do wrong here? I wonder if I just had the LED a little bit too far forward. You can kind of, let me see. You know what, I'm not gonna bother with it, it don't matter to me. I guess lesson of advice is I put it too far this way, you'd want it back a little bit further to displace the light. Like I said, this was a passenger side one, so I really don't care. Like, if it was the driver's side one, I'd probably fix it, but it ain't worth it. Just be careful how you do it. And that's how simple it is to really change those. Um, unplug everything. Saturn iron, glue gun. Um, we need our torque screw, which I happen to lose. Let's see if I can find it quick. I was pulling it out, and I, I threw it by accident, kind of like flicked it. And man, I don't know. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Perfect. We got lucky. We got this one. Grab our other one. Right there. Our torque spit should be out in the truck. And basically all you're going to do is put your switch back together. Uh, it's very simple to do this. I know I told y'all I'd make a video, and I did. Um, there's our Torx bit. Just going to throw your cover back over it. Like so. I know, guys. It's very tough to do this holding a camera. I really do apologize. I don't have a tripod or anything like that. Um, my God, the word best I can do is... Let me set you right there for a second so I can line the switch up at least. There it is. Make sure your switch feels good. Oh, and there goes the cover again. Hold on. You'll know if you did it right, like your switches will feel normal. You shouldn't even be able to tell any difference really. And if you did, you, you probably got a little hot glue somewhere where you shouldn't have. I had that problem on my driver's side when I had my blue LEDs in. Um, basically, uh, I had a little too much glue somewhere in the passenger side switch. And it was kind of hard to get it at the window down from the driver's side. Like you kind of, you'd like basically really have to push. Like, I mean, not, it, well, it wasn't horrible. I'm used to it, but like most people couldn't get my window down. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I did this, this switch setup is a lot better. What I would recommend, buy pre, pre, pre-wired uh, LEDs, I'd buy diffused, like I did this time. See, I just learned from my mistakes, basically. So pre-wired diffuse is what you want. And basically for your search, you want to go on eBay. eBay is going to be probably your best bet. Maybe Amazon will have them, but I doubt it. eBay's got a lot of stuff. Uh, so you'd go on eBay, you'd type in, uh, these are three millimeter. I had five millimeter before, three millimeters better. If they make four millimeter, I'd probably go with that actually. But I don't think they make them. So you'd want to type in like three millimeter, whatever size you want. Five will work, but they're a little big. They're a little tight. That's what I had before, 5mm, these are 3, so I'd type in like 3mm, whatever color you wanted. So you type in 3mm, uh, example, red, uh, diffused, LED, 12 volt, 12V. 12 um, yeah, that should work. 3mm, LED, red, red LED, diffused, 12V. That should work, yeah. I think that's what I typed in. Oh, pre-wired, pre-wired, 12V. That means they're wired with the resistors in them. You have to have resistors. I like you'll probably blow those bulbs because basically those resistors resist it to very little amount of power because uh, LEDs use so much little less. Put your window switch back together. Just kind of tuck it in there. Get the clips lined up. And there you go. That's how quick and simple that job was, guys. And now you look cool. They look kind of pink during the day, but trust me, at night, they pop. They pop very well. Over there.
camera makes them look a little more red than they are during the day. My friend's like, if I was pink, I'm like, just wait. Nighttime game, he's like, dude, that looks nice. That's how simple this job is to do. Um, next, we're going to do our dash right again. So I'll probably make it a new video because my other one was pretty, uh, pretty bad. Like, I had a lot of, like, this trying to hold the camera. So maybe I'll be able to balance the camera somewhere. Show you how to do it right. Um, and then maybe these, this, all kinds of stuff. Like, I want to do it all, but we'll see. This is a step. Thank you guys for watching me and putting up with this long video. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, we'll be back with something new soon. Um, finally got this requested video out. So, uh, oh, get the lights off. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And uh, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you.